For the longest time, I've had a deep love and interest in creative spaces or studios, whether it be a painter's studio in a small warehouse, a high-end design firm, a woodworking workshop, film production studio, whatever it is. I love seeing the behind the scenes of creative work and observing the process of that creative work being made and how the artist has you know, set up their studio or their workshop. For me personally, when I see an artist or a creative on social media, I'm equally interested in their desk setup or their studio setup as I am in their actual work. I love seeing the environment, the space, the physical setup where that work is actually created. I love seeing how the artist has her paint supplies organized or how you know a woodworker has his tools laid out in the workshop or how even like a fashion design team has their studio laid out. Whatever it is, I seem to have this, this deep interest in it. I think about where does the artist work? Is it in a large white studio with big windows or is it a small side room in his house? Is it an old or a new building? Why does he have a studio set up like that? Does she work alone or does she have a team of people? Right? These are just some of the things that I'm really, really interested in as an artist myself. And so I felt like making a video on this topic. I'm talking about it and maybe you can resonate with my interest and passion. One of the first possible career options for me as a young teenager was architecture. So I love buildings and interior design and specifically the construction of buildings. Right, so I much prefer to analyze and look at a building that is actually being built in construction, seeing all the steel work, how it fits together, clearly seeing how the architect and the engineers have thought about the structure of the building. Right, I, I could stare at a construction site for hours, literally. I remember a number of years ago we had a new cinema built in the small town that I was living in. And I remember going out of my way on a number of occasions to actually see the building site and see how it was constructed, what it looks like from the inside, how the steel work was you know, connecting to the concrete on the ground, how the walls were being put up around the steel work. This kind of stuff is super interesting to me. In a similar vein, I've always loved the behind the scenes footage of films. Maybe you can resonate with this. I remember seeing the behind the scenes footage for the Lord of the Rings trilogy a number of years ago when it came out and seeing all of the production work that uh, Weta Workshop, the production company that, uh, that they did for the, for the trilogy, it was really impactful on me and I was really, really interested in seeing it and so much so that I actually wanted to go into film production. I wanted to be a film production designer and be intimately involved with how the film looked, the set design, etc. I was completely obsessed with seeing how the artists and the designers were working and how they were producing the props and all of the things that go into the Lord of the Rings films. It was completely fascinating to me and again, like, enjoyed the behind the scenes footage just as much uh, as the actual trilogy films. I should also say that one of my favorite TV shows is How It's Made, which is a Canadian show that aired quite a number of years ago. I don't think they make episodes anymore, but each episode, the production crew, the camera crew went into a different factory and would show us how a completely random food product or any kind of product was made in the factory. Again, it was just completely fascinating to me. and I just loved seeing the behind the scenes of how things were actually being made. So if you don't know, I'm currently a professional freelance illustrator. And so, of course, I have a particular interest for illustration and fine art and specifically fine art studios and illustrator studios, what kind of equipment they use, what, what their desks look like. Not all of the things that I mentioned, like architectural design or how tomato ketchup is made in a factory are related to illustration and fine art, of course, but the connection, the consistent thread of interest, which I really only discovered recently is a love for seeing how things are made and created as well as the space and the setups that facilitate the production of that creative work. So one thing that I've been really thinking about a lot recently is if you were to ask me if you only had to make one kind of video on YouTube, what would you make? And I came to the conclusion that the answer would most likely be videos on the creative process and creative spaces. Going into and filming creative spaces and studios that you know, you've probably never seen before and talking about the process of making art and designing things and building things rather than the end product, because there are, you know, so many YouTube channels that talk about the end product, whether it be art or film or fashion, right, whatever it is, and they do an, uh, a fantastic job, but there aren't that many YouTubers who are talking about creative spaces or creative studios or actually what goes into creating and designing these particular products. I really want to talk about the process of making art and designing things and building things. I don't really care too much about clothing or 
furniture. But you can be sure that I will watch hours of people in the design studios looking at how designers come up with ideas or how a carpenter is constructing some particular bit of furniture and how they have their workshop laid out and particular pieces of equipment next to other pieces so that it's efficient and that it works well. This is the kind of stuff that I really, really love. And there are a few videos online of tours of creative spaces, studios, workshops, but there isn't that much of it. So maybe this could be a niche that I potentially fill. Let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in this subject and you also want to see this kind of content. You want to go into studios, into workshops and see how these artists and creators are setting out and laying out their creative spaces. This is something that's really interesting to me. And of course, I'd also be interested to know if it's interesting to you guys. There's something deeply interesting to me about how people organize their creative space. And whilst I personally tend to have an inclination towards things being very clean and tidy and organized, I'm also interested in the other group of creatives that thrive in chaos, in messiness. And of course there are, you know, a group of artists and creatives that, that certainly fit that category. A classic example of this and the personal favorite artist of mine is Lucian Freud. You've probably heard of this if you're also an artist or in the art space. He died in 2011, but lived a life producing some of the most incredible portraits and figure paintings that exist exist, basically. So he would very regularly paint people in his London studio, which as you can see in the images, was not a perfectly pristine or white walled modern studio like we see today, but rather very untidy, dirty Victorian house with thick layers of discarded paint on the walls and piles of rags in every corner. And of course, what's also interesting is that his work was a direct reflection of this environment, often having very muddied desaturated colors, browns, greens, yellows, with rough, heavy paint marks. The studio itself even, interestingly, became the object of study in a number of his paintings. What's super cool is that in contrast to this, we have the studio of someone like Takashi Murakami, who again, you've probably heard of. He's a very, very well-known artist. He has this massive, super clean, ultra organized white walled studio in Miyoshi, which is a industrial area outside of Tokyo. This article on wallpaper.com has some really interesting things to say about the studio. The studio is remarkably clean and highly organized. Large sheets of cardboard give information about who is on duty, production schedules and deadlines, and changes to artworks. When a dot of black paint has been added to a painting, the painting is photographed. The photograph is then printed out, time stamped, and added to the production board for the artwork, so Murakami can go back to the previous versions if he chooses. It's a process and a way of working and a setup that I've really never come across before in any other artist. It's super interesting to know that he almost works in the way that we use Photoshop, right? If you're an artist or an illustrator, you have these layers of history. You can go back and look at various iterations of your artwork, right, in Photoshop. And he's doing that in real life by printing out, you know, each iteration of his artwork and putting them up on this big board. Super fascinating, really, really interesting way of working. And of course, extremely time consuming and a huge amount of work. The article goes on to say, in lieu of windows, the studio is illuminated by hundreds of fluorescent tubes, making it impossible to tell the time of day. There's also hardly any sound, staff work arduously at computers or crouched over paintings. Again, what's really interesting is that he has a lot of people working for him, in contrast to someone like Lucian Freud or you know, pretty much any other artist. If you're familiar with uh, Murakami's work, you'll know that it's often very, very large, very, very detailed, very precise and, and, and carefully produced. And so it's just super interesting to know that he has this massive team of people behind all of his work. You know, yes, he's going to be the one actually designing, creating the artwork, but ultimately he has this massive system of, of production behind him super fascinating to look into his studio and see this in practice. So the article is partly discussing the process of setting up one of Takashi's exhibitions a few years ago, which isn't particularly relevant for this video, but it goes on to say, interestingly, that the back sides of the canvas are perfect, right? No less elaborate than the front, she says. Plus, you can see the names of all the contributors who participated in the creation of each painting. Sometimes Murakami works on one painting for years, so the list can be almost endless. I believe it reveals his attitudes towards his team. They're not just anonymous assistants, like in a medieval studio or contemporary art factory, they are highly devoted and appreciated collaborators. Just fascinating to understand the process of how these massive, detailed, precise pieces of work are produced. And it's really great to hear that, of course, he doesn't necessarily just take credit. In some ways he does, of course, take credit for his work. Um, no one really knows the name of the other people working on the artwork, but like it said in the article, we can see that all of their names are printed on the back of these artworks. And uh, it just goes to show the, the difference 
in how people create work and how there are so many different ways of producing artwork and a lot of people are just completely unaware of. I mean, if you saw a piece of Murakami artwork, you probably wouldn't have thought that there might have been 20, 30, 50, 100 people, however many people were involved in producing that piece of artwork. So I hope those two examples demonstrate my varying interest in creative spaces and seeing behind the scenes of some of the world's best artistic and creative work. It's so fascinating to me to see the significant difference in how these artists work and what they've built around them to facilitate their creative output. So if you're interested in seeing more of these kinds of videos, hearing me talk more about these creative spaces and maybe in the future actually going into these spaces and studios and workshops myself and doing my own tours and showing people these artistic studios that no one has ever seen before. That would be really exciting. So definitely subscribe if you want to see that. And let me know in the comments if you're also interested in behind the scenes footage, right? I want to know if people kind of resonate with this, if people, or if I'm just the only one who's interested in behind the scenes and the process of making art and design. So if you are, then drop a comment below. Let me know your thoughts and consider liking the video. But until next time, thanks for watching.